second graders, it is Mrs. McCoy. Welcome to our very last library at home for the school year. Can you believe it? We've made it almost to the very end of the school year and this will be our last library lesson as second graders. I can't believe it either. I know you guys have been working so hard at home and I am super proud of you. So let's take a look at our last book for this school year. It is called, This Moose Belongs to Me. And this book is written and illustrated by Oliver Jeffers. Now, these illustrations are extra cool because what the author and illustrator Oliver Jeffers did is he went to secondhand stores, stores like Goodwill and the Salvation Army, stores where you can buy things that were owned by other people. And he found old paintings like this background, this scenery that has the mountain and the lake. And then he added his own paintings. He added his own characters on top of them. So he had kind of a creative way of making the art for this story. He took a painting that someone else made, and then he painted his own characters on top of those paintings. Kind of cool. All right. This moose belongs to me. Let's read it together. Here's our title page. Wilfred owned a moose. He hadn't always owned a moose. The moose came to him a while ago and he knew, he just knew that it was meant to be his. He thought he would call him Marcel. He gave him a little name tag, Marcel. He began following Marcel, explaining the rules of how to be a good pet. If you look close in the little picture, it shows him laying on a couch and Marcel the moose is serving him food and drinks. How silly. Much of the time, it seemed as though the moose wasn't listening, but Wilfred knew he was. Mostly because he followed rule number four very well. Not making too much noise while Wilfred plays his record collection. So there's the moose standing still while Wilfred listens to his music. Sometimes the moose wasn't a very good pet. He generally ignored rule number seven, going whichever way Wilfred wants to go. Yeah, Wilfred, I think you can't really move a moose if he doesn't want to go somewhere. They're pretty big animals. The moose had a very good sense of direction, and Wilfred did not. And because the moose was particularly poor on rule number seven, subsection B, maintaining a certain closeness to home, Wilfred quickly learned to bring some string along on their outings so that he could find his way back again. Sometimes the moose was an excellent pet. He had no trouble with rule number 11, providing shelter from the rain. Or rule number 16, knocking down things that are out of Wilfred's reach. Good work. One day, as Wilfred discussed their plans for the coming year on a particularly long walk, he made a terrible discovery. Someone else thought she owned the moose. Rodrigo, you're back! Uh-oh. This grandma thinks that the moose belongs to her. She's calling him Rodrigo. Wilfred was dumbstruck. That means he's like shocked. He can't say anything. This moose was Marcel, not Rodrigo. The old lady was mistaken, and Wilfred thought it only proper that he correct her. Um, this moose belongs to me, he explained. And to prove it, he called Marcel. Heel! But the moose did not respond. He seemed more interested in the old lady. Good, Rodrigo. Fine. 
embarrassed and enraged, Wilfred rushed off for home. What do you think enraged means? He's embarrassed. He's also mad. Enraged means he's mad and frustrated. But in his haste and miles from anywhere, he tripped over his string and got tangled up. Uh-oh. And there he lay. Wilfred was beginning to get a little bit worried. It was getting late and the monsters would be out soon. Uh-oh. He had just ruled out the last of his options when along came the moose. There's all of his ideas. He thinks maybe a penguin will save him. Maybe a bear with an ax will come and cut him loose. Maybe lightning will strike and break the string. Maybe this uh, swordfish will come and use his long pointy nose to cut him free. Those are all his ideas. But here comes the moose. And he performed rule number 73 brilliantly, rescuing your owner from perilous situations. Perilous means dangerous. So one of his rules is to rescue him if he's in danger. There he is. All was forgiven. And perhaps, Wilfred admitted, he had never really owned the moose anyway. With that in mind, he and the moose reached a compromise. The moose would agree to all of Wilfred's rules whenever it suited him. Dominic, you're back and you brought me an apple. Oh my goodness, I thought we were at the end of the story, and here's another character who thinks that the moose belongs to him. How silly. So let's see, what names did the moose have in this story? The moose was named Marcel, and Rodrigo, and Dominic. If you had a moose, what would you name him? Hmm. Can you really own a moose? No way, it's a wild animal. That was This Moose Belongs to Me by Oliver Jeffers. Did you guys enjoy that story? I really love those illustrations where Oliver Jeffers paints the little boy and the moose on top of all of the old paintings. Pretty cool. So before we end this lesson for the week, I'm going to share my screen with you and show you what's going on for summer reading, what we're doing um, for a summer reading program at the library. And then I'm also going to show you the library website and how to access all of the stories that I've been reading this year so that you can listen to them again over the summer. So take a look. All right, guys, here is the Carrillo Virtual Library. This is the little pretend library that I've made for everyone to be able to access at home. And I'll put a link to it in the description of this video and on Google Classroom so you can bookmark it, save it, so you can get back to it over the summer. Here is what it looks like right now. I'll move myself over here. Here's what it looks like. There's a cartoon Mrs. McCoy with the background of our actual library. And here on the left-hand side is whatever the current lesson is for the week. And here is what it will look like over the summer. There's this little extra page with the bookshelf and the books on those shelves are all of the books that I've read out loud while um, schools have been closed over the last couple of months. So any of these books that you click on the cover, you can listen, it's a link to take you to the video of me reading that story. So if you feel like having a story read to you during the summer break, you can go to this website, click on any of the books and listen to me read it. So that's one way to have stories read to you over the summer. Another activity that you can do during the summer, up here on the top of my website, you can see that it says SMUSD Library at Home. If you click there, it will take you to this website, which is one that myself, along with all of the other librarians from the San Marcos schools, we've created this. It's got a ton of resources like ebooks, ways to access books online if you can't go to the bookstore or go to the public library. Here are book clubs, read alouds, not just from me, but from the other librarians and teachers too. There's um, our research pages that you can go do research online, podcasts, extras has all kinds of virtual field trips and stuff. 
stuff. But we are working on some summer reading activities that are going to be available to you. Um, there's going to be things like bingo and choice boards where you can choose different activities to do. Um, also, it's going to link to whatever the public library and Barnes and Noble and what they're doing for summer reading. And that's going to be listed right up here with all the different categories. It's not ready yet, so it's not posted on the website. But as soon as it is, it'll go up here. It'll be ready for you by the end of the school year. So you can keep growing your brain. You can keep learning at home. You can still have access to books that you can read online, even if we're still staying at home. So that is the SMUSD Library at Home page. And this is my own web page of just the stories that I have read. So I hope those things help you over the summer. All right, friends, I hope that gave you some good ideas for continuing to read and growing your brains over the summertime. I just want to say one more time before we leave each other in this video, again, I am super, super proud of you guys for all of the hard work and grit and determination, even though we were in a really weird situation with the schools closing. I'm super, super proud of all of you. I miss you guys so much. I hope you have an amazing summer. Keep reading, keep growing your brains, and I I really hope that we get to see each other in the real library and share some stories together again soon. All right, my friends, I miss you. I love you. See you later. Bye, second graders.